Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another one of our um, KB Career Talks. Today, we have Ms. Irma Hergi, who is a project manager at EPR Construction. So, Ms. Irma, would you like to um, give us a brief introduction about yourself and what you do? Yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I am a project manager, a construction project manager with DPR Construction here in Southern California. Uh, I've been in the construction industry for about 16 years, um, generally managing uh, a variety of projects, a lot of uh, commercial technical projects. Uh, we do large scale construction that ranges, um, you know, anywhere from you know, million, two million bucks, all the way up to several million dollars uh, project value. Um, we we are actually now an international company. Uh, we are one of the largest, uh, not largest, but one of the, I should say, one of the top uh, 50 contractors in, in the United States uh, in terms of project volume and ranking uh, that, that come out. There's a ENR magazine that ranks uh, construction companies and we're one of the highly, one highly ranked companies. Uh, it's a very diverse company and I love working for them. I love the philosophy with which they do their work and the, the emphasis that they place on giving back to the community and doing things like this and a variety of other things to help give back to the community and be an integral part um, is one of the reasons why I value my job and I feel they value uh, their customers. Uh, so I believe it's a it's a great place to work. Uh, it's a great career. Uh, it's not for everyone, but it's a great career for people interested in engineering, construction, design. Uh, a variety of roles uh, are are available in this industry, and I'll, I'll, I'm happy to answer questions about it and tell you a little bit more about it as we as we go through here. Um. So thank you for that. Um. I really like that. You know, you kind of talked about um, what specifically, you know, um, your career gives you, um, you know, the enrichment that you get from it. So um, that goes into our next question, which will be, um, why did you choose your career? It's, it's interesting. I think um, one of the things that's difficult is I, I was always interested in a lot of things. I, 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 I was a student that just loved being in clubs, loved doing things. Um, I didn't I enjoyed school. Uh, High school was busy for me. I did a lot of extracurriculars, um, but I but I always had a difficulty trying to narrow down what I wanted to be. And I think that that's probably a choice that you all face when people ask you, what do you want to do when you grow up? And what do you want to do when you go to college? And you're like, I don't know. And that was me. I didn't know. I knew I had a lot of interests. Um, so I, I went into college actually not knowing what I wanted to major in. I was undecided. And in through through my first years of college, I realized that the things that I I looked at the classes that I loved doing and that I enjoyed doing, and ultimately I ended up majoring in architecture. I double majored in Spanish uh, because I always also love languages and and language arts. Um, so I double majored in architecture and Spanish. Uh, through architecture, I was able to do design courses. I love building models. Um, I love the engineering that comes behind it. Um, and I and I really loved that that major. I loved the, the classes that it took to consider yourself an architecture major. Um, but when I graduated, I actually went into teaching. I went into teaching for four years. Uh, I, I did a, a program that was intended to reach out. And at the time, there was an, an extreme shortage of teachers. And so I joined a program and it was a two year commitment to teach. Um, but through that, I realized that I, I, I enjoy teaching. I loved it. Um, but I always felt that if I didn't go out and try to do something in architecture and construction, that I, I felt that I would regret it, right? Because that was, that was for me. And so I took a leap of faith and I said, you know, I got to give that a shot. So after four years of teaching, I went back and I worked for a design management company. We managed a large project in LA for the community colleges. And through that experience, I realized, actually, I don't want to do design. I really love what these con construction contractors are doing. And so after two years working in that program, I decided to go work for a general contractor. 
and I've been in construction ever since. So um, it's okay to not know what you want to do. I think you know the the path and the journey will guide you as you as you discover and try things. You you'll figure out what it is your is your passion. Thank you so much for sharing a bit of wisdom with us and a bit about your path and journey. Our following question asks about your general salary for someone in your position. Would you care to share with us? Yeah, it, uh, it, your salary can vary depending on the type of, obviously the company that you work for. Um, I think the industry is very competitive, very well paid. Uh, a lot of times you'll find in, in our industry, it's very common uh, for there to be what they call head headhunters, right? People that get paid to find the talent because there's a there's a lack of of qualified people for these jobs, and so which is a good thing so to be in this industry because there's high demand for people that you know are are, are learned and know what they're doing and, and want to get into this industry. Uh, when you start off, uh, typically in at this level for major major construction companies, you start off as a project engineer right out of college. Um, and salaries, depending on the company you work for, I mean, it could it could be starting anywhere around the fifty thousand dollar range and up. Uh, so the more experience you have, more degrees you have, you may go upwards to seventy or eighty thousand dollars, and then you start to get into uh, what they call like an assistant project manager or project manager role, and that can that can be upwards of ninety, a hundred thousand and up. So if you get into a very um, you know, if, if you build your experience and you're able to work competitively for a large scale company, uh, you're, you're definitely looking at after a couple of years of working in the industry, uh, being a project manager or being other some of these other roles, uh, you're looking to make a, a, a really comfortable living. Um, if, if you have the skills and you have the interest and this is this is your passion. Thank you. Thank you. And we know like uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic has affected everybody one way or another. So could you tell us like what your career was like before the pandemic and how it has changed? Yeah, it's, it's difficult. I think uh, like everybody, when COVID hit, it made us question, you know, it was, it was a scary time. We thought, we thought our industry was going to be shut down and it was going to be considered, there was a moment when they were thinking about what was essential and what was not essential. Um, so there was a scary moment where it made us question, well, where, where do we stand? Um, now, fast forward to where we're at, we've realized um, a, lot, a large part of our work, yes, can be done remotely, but at the end of the day, we're a construction company and it's really a people industry and, and, and a work industry, right? So you can't remotely build a building. You know, at the end of the day, you have to have people in in the field, on their boots on the ground, uh, working and building a project. And so it's it's forced us to change the way we, we construct and we have to find ways you know, to wear a mask, to do everything possible, to build a building with people being six feet or more socially distanced. And so uh, it, I, I won't say it's slowed things down, it's definitely changed it. Um, and we're a lot more cautious, cleanliness, sanitation, that's always been important to us. Uh, but it just drives it just drives how we manage our, our projects. And at, at the root of it is an understanding that, you know, if our people are not safe, we cannot build. And so it just drives the importance that my company places um, and a lot of companies do on safety. So uh, you, you can't continue if your people are sick. You can't continue if people are, you know, continually contracting something from work. And so is just further driven the importance of safety and taking care of people, uh, which is one thing that DPR prides itself on. And so for us, it's been very easy to continue uh, instilling those, those values, which is to take care of people because you can't, you can't build buildings safely if your, your employees are sick. And so it just further drives, drives that point. Thank you so much for that answer. Um, and so now I wanna go into, um, Earlier, you were talking about how your specific career um, enriches you and gives you an experience that you might not be able to get somewhere else. Um, and so I wanted to ask, what specifically um, drives you to go to work every day now? 
I think for, for me, I think it's always been a love of seeing things being built. Um, it sounds very simple, but I think there's a sense of pride in, in being a part of these great projects that you can, you can drive down a city or you can, you can go through a facility or a campus and know that you had a part in building that building or that project. Um, and, and it's a challenge every day. I, I like that no, no two projects are the same. Or one of the one of the things about construction is you're you're constantly working yourself out of a job, right? Every project is unique, and you're driving to finish that project and move on to the next one. And so for me, I value that it's always a refreshing experience, right? We we go into a job and everything's different, everything's new. You're going to encounter different challenges, and that keeps you on your feet and it keeps you motivated. And so I feel that this is a job that never gets dull. And and keeps you working and keeps you keeps you you know for me it's 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 fun it's entertaining to see uh, this work and collaborate with people. Uh, we work with all kinds of professionals. Um, we work with craft workers and trade partners, and so it gives you a variety of people to work with and a variety of challenges that that you show up to work every day. And so you're constantly solving problems, and I I enjoy that. Thank you so much once again. Um, being that your career is people oriented, how do you maintain good relationships with your coworkers and colleagues? It's it's a really important skill. I think it's it's a skill that you always work on and develop. Uh, I think in all industries, sometimes we 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 may we may dismiss how important that is, but just like it's important in high school, and you'll you'll soon realize that. It's important to build relationships with people, learn how to collaborate. Um, it, it's, it, it's so critically important uh, to build relationships with, with everybody. And so it, it's one of the, you know, it's one of the things that are critical for us doing business is, is working well with people, communicating. And I think that that's a skill uh, that you, sh you know, everyone should work on. Uh, important in any industry, but for our industry, we're, we're all about that because a building doesn't just get built with one type of person. There's, you know, like I mentioned, there's designers, there's engineers, there's all this collaboration and all this constant communication that we need to do. And, and it's, it's just so important to, to continue to develop those communication skills and, 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 and uh, continually strive to build relationships with people. Uh, so I, I think I answered the question. I don't know if I answered that question. <laughs> you did, and I definitely agree. It is important to maintain a relationship. Like if I've made some people around you, it may be harder during like our pandemic, but it still is very important and essential. So our next question is, do you see the value in students learning things that can help prepare them for the future? And what are some key points you would like students to take away from this presentation? I think one of the things that I always strive with students is uh, learning, learning to be well-rounded. I think it's, you, you always need to, it's always great to focus and, and, and be really good at one thing. But even if, even if you, even with that, you should also try to do your part to be well-rounded and get involved with things. It just, it makes you. It helps make you a better, better person, right? When, when, when you when you go on to college or when you go on to whatever trade or business you do, um, people, especially in this industry, you know, everything is about connections. And the way you connect with people is is finding commonalities. And the more you know, and I think it makes for a richer experience when you can talk to someone about something and. It doesn't always have to be academics. Like I might connect with an architect on music and that helps me build a relationship with that architect. Um, I might, you know, talk about race cars with one of the, the guys in the field and that helps me connect with that laborer. It helps me build that relationship. So, you know, never, never underestimate the value of the things that you know and your hobbies. Um, you know, academics is, is, is great, but, and, and that's part of it, is being well-rounded, reading books, looking at movies. It, it all feeds into 
being a well-rounded person and, and using those skills to communicate and to talk to people and, and, and forge connections. Um, so I think my, my takeaway is uh, don't underestimate, you know, participating in those clubs at school. That's, that's part of being a well-rounded student. Get involved with a, a, a club or an organization. All of that is what colleges look like, look at as well. And, and that's the reason is they're looking for you to be a well-rounded student. Um, and that's the same thing that companies look for. High level companies like DPR and other companies, they're not just looking for the student that got A's. They're looking for the student that did community service. They're looking for the student that, hey, he was involved in an engineering club or she was involved in an engineering club. So we're looking for that rich person that we know is a great person to work with, be around and, you know, work, have fun. The whole, you know, we're, they're looking at the big picture and these companies look for great, great people. And, and it's about building yourself and building your skills. So, so everything is important. When you, when you do things, everything is important. Building yourself into a well-rounded person is, is what's great and what's, in, you know, enlightening and, and, and someone that somebody wants to be around. Thank you so much for that answer. Um, I really feel like it applies especially to Kindred students because we're always um, talking about, you know, enrichment activities within school um, and things that can help better you as a person. Um, and so um, we're going to open up questions to the chat if any students want to ask any questions. But um, thank you for so far for this presentation. And um, if you have any more, you know, advice, words of wisdom to share, um, please go ahead. We do, we do currently have a high school internship that we offer. Uh, it, it is geared towards students that are interested in any kind of engineering, design. Um, if you, you think you like 3D modeling, that's something that we also do in our, in our, in our field, in our company. Uh, it is a paid internship. Uh, the location for this summer is in Pasadena, so it does require you to be able to get yourself to Pasadena every day. Um, but it's a great internship. Um, I can I can probably place the link on the chat. Applications are due April 16. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, it's a wonderful opportunity. It is competitive. Obviously, there's one slot. Um, but it, you know it it'll give you it, it's a tremendous opportunity. I mean, I wish I had something like that when I was when I was in high school. Um, so you can look at the information and if you feel it's something for yourself, uh, you're welcome to reach out to me. Uh, I think Ms. Thigpen and Ms. Soto have my contact information. Uh, so you, you can feel free to uh, ask me questions about that internship. Um, and you're welcome to ask me questions right now. Um, but that's, it's a great internship opportunity if that sounds like something that, that you would love and that you enjoy and that a field that you're interested in. Um, let's see, we have a question. What type of projects do you work in? And do you have some long-term and short-term uh, project spans? Uh, yeah, so I've, so currently for the past three years, I've been working in what we call the, the, the life sciences, uh, you know, phar pharmaceutical, basically a pharmaceutical, you know, manufacturing. So there's a lot of specializations in construction. I think typically when we think of construction, we think, you know, I'm building a house. Uh, we actually don't do residential, so that tells you <laughs> that tells you how 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 much of a variety of construction we have. We don't specialize in residential. We do a lot of commercial, what we call life sciences, so uh, laboratories, research facilities, hospitals, uh, so medical, um, a lot of government, what we call da data centers. You know, say Facebook, right? These please, Instagram and all these things uh, require. Uh, places where you're housing all that data and all, that, all those servers. So there's a, a huge industry in building these technical, highly technical buildings. Uh, for myself in the past three years, I've been building facilities that produce medicine, produce, you know, high level experiments for, you know, cutting edge uh, medical breakthroughs. Um, so there's a high variety of these things. And some of these projects can span, I, I might be working on multiple projects at once. I might just be working on one project. If it's large enough, you might work on one project for several years. You know, it might be two or three years before you go on to your next project. Um, but when you're doing multiples, 
we might have a small quick project that takes us two to three months, um, which is not always typical, but we do some of those. And then typically we have projects that last several months to a year, a year um, is more typical for our projects. Any other questions? For the link to the internship, you can place it in the chat. Oh, well, let me see, and I believe. Let me do that. There's an application as well. I'll guide you. I'm gonna place this in the chat and you guys can take a look. Okay, and I believe the panel will have it below. So you can place yeah, it in the chat. Yeah, if, you, we'll if you don't pick it up on the chat or you have questions and you decide about it later, you can reach out to Ms. Thigpen. I've given her the information. And so uh, you're welcome to reach out. We've got another question. What were some of your most challenging projects? Ooh, challenging projects. Um, I, I, I'd say right now, you know, I'd say the work I'm doing right now, I've been doing this for several years, but working in the pharmaceutical industry is, is new to me. And uh, as they say, you're always learning. And so for me, I, I have a lot of experience doing more standard construction, right? You got plumbing, you got water, you got, you know, gas and, you know, typical things that go in a building. Um, but in pharmaceutical, you're dealing with a lot of uh, very specialized equipment and, and manufacturing processes. And so it's, it's something that I, I, you know, I never studied that before. So I'm learning as I do the work and I'm learning, you know, what these, what this equipment is and what this machinery is and learning how to deal with, you know, you, you guys, uh, King Drew, I know you do internships at the hospitals. So when you look at a hospital and you go in there and you see there's piping, you know, oxygen that runs through the walls and there's, you know, you get into these facilities where you're not just running water and gas, you're running water, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, you know, water for injections, uh, every, all these things that need to be sanitized that have certain uh, handling processes. And it's been a learning experience for me. So I think uh, for me personally, that's, that's been a challenge and it's, and I love it because I'm learning something new and expanding my, my, my knowledge. Let's see. How do you balance your family and work life? What is something you wish you knew before going into college? Ooh, okay, that's a lot of, a lot of questions. So family and work life, I think it's been very difficult for everyone right now because of COVID. So I have two kids and they're young. One of them is in first grade. And it's been very difficult. It's been very difficult even on when I have the opportunity to work from home, uh, juggling to have someone in the other room online who is not mature enough to leave me alone when I'm doing a presentation. So the fact that we haven't been interrupted right now is probably a sheer miracle. <laughs> but it's a, it's a challenge. You, know, you, 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 you learn to organize, you learn to plan your day. Um, for me, one of the things that works is and, and I love my, my company's very supportive and gives advice for how to handle things and how to become better people. And one of, one of the pieces of advice they gave is have everything on one calendar, right? Including, they encourage you, go ahead and put your personal stuff in, in your work calendar so that everything's in one place and you're able to better see and coordinate your day. So I enjoy the flexibility that my company gives me to, to handle things. And they put it a large amount of trust in that we will get our we will get our job done. And if I need to step out, you know, for a doctor's appointment, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to get my work done. And I, and I really value that that there's a trust in knowing that we we get our job done. And we also have the support. I love this company. I'm actually, uh, I think next week I'll start a coaching program that my company's offering for free uh, to help help us with strategies for handling the work-life balance and having kids at home. And that's not something that every company does. Um, so I, I really value the place that I work for. They do these types of things. They help support us. And I think overall, it helps us become better people, better able to manage our work. And, and I really value that. And I value that support. And so um, I'm not going to say I'm scoring an A and being able to juggle it. I'm, I'm managing it. And I hope this coaching program will help you know, make me, make me even better able to manage it. And 
produce, you know, better outcome at work and produce a better outcome at home and pay attention to my children. Uh, the other question was, what is something you wish you knew before going into college? Whew. You know, there's, there's a lot. I, I, I didn't come from, from a background, you know, my family, we were very, you know, I would say poor, you know, we, we, we managed to get by. Um, I, I came from a low socioeconomic background. I, I grew up in East LA. Um, but uh, there was a lot that I felt when I went to college that I was unprepared for. I, academically, I was there. I, I, you know, I took like eight AP classes when I was in high school. I did all these sports. I, I did, I did everything right on paper, but personally, um, I lacked, I lacked mentorship. Um, there wasn't a lot of people out there, you know, willing to help. And so one of, one of the things, a few things, but one of the things I would push is, uh, making connections with people that you feel can be a mentor. That's so important. If there's a teacher that aligns and supports you connect with that teacher or connect with a club sponsor or an organization sponsor, someone that you can help bounce ideas off of. Uh, because as much as you think you know when you're young, there's so much you don't know. And it's so helpful to get advice from adults who have been there and done that. Um, so reach out and, and try to find mentorship. Try not to you know, navigate this, this path on your own. Uh, it's very difficult and you'll make mistakes. Uh, so find that, find those mentors, seek out people that can help you seek out good peers and friends that are there to support you and want better for themselves. Um, and the other thing is just get out there and experience things. Um, it's important to have those A's, but it's important, again, going back to being well-rounded, be involved in organizations, learn to grow and, and enjoy, enjoy life. It's, it's, it helps you become a better person. And sometimes when you shelter yourself. I know it's very difficult right now with COVID to be involved in things, but try your best to stay connected with people and experience life because that in itself is, is a learning experience. You, you know, your learning doesn't always come from a book. And I felt when I went to college that I was disadvantaged in that I had not traveled. You know, I didn't have the privilege of traveling. I didn't have the privilege of going to museums. And I felt, I felt sheltered in a lot of ways. Um, I, I, saw, I saw the discrepancy in what other people had experienced. Um, so do your best to get out there and, and try to take advantage of opportunities when they come by and, and get involved in things and, and grow those skills and connect with people. So let's see, anything else? I, I'm gonna quickly look at the chat here. What's your biggest accomplishment in life? <laughs> That's a tough one. You know, um, I would say, you know, this is, and this is going to go contrary to the presentation, but I feel that the, my biggest accomplishment in life right now is, is really my children. I, I, I know we're, we're all about careers and, and I love my career, um, but it, it allows me the opportunity to to have my children and have a have a good life with them, and it's it's it brings me happy more happiness and joy than 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 anything, and so I I am proud of my job. I'm proud of things that I've done and that I've gone to college, um, but at the end of the day, uh, it's it's about life, right? And it's about ha leading leading a happy, healthy life. And I love that I work at a place that allows me to do that and puts emphasis on. On, on us, on us being good people, being healthy people, being productive. But at the end of the day, um, they strive and one of the core values is enjoyment. And they really focus on that. And I appreciate that because it lets me live my life to the fullest with the people who matter most. And that's, that's my family. So yeah, any other questions? All right. Thank you. And there's one more. On oh, there's the there's one more. What's what type of skills do you think are important for your specific career? Uh, the skills. Um, 
I would say, so even though I've been driving the point of being well-rounded, when you, when you do decide and fix on a career, it's very important to, to be very, very specific about targeting your path towards that goal. So if you know you're gonna do design or engineering or construction, there are certain classes that you do need to take that are helpful. And so that, that is important. Find that path, find those classes. Um, the, the sooner you figure out what you can do, the better, because then you can start targeting specific classes for that. Um, but of course, uh, when, when you go to college, it's kind of, it's pretty much, there, there's usually recommended courses that you take if you wanna do a particular major or field. Um, but I would say skills, obviously, I mean, for my skill, again, it's, it's being well-rounded. It's, it's not being afraid of math, <laughs> not being afraid of science. And, and, uh, and you, always, you always need to be a good communicator. Uh, so no matter what you do, uh, building on your communication skills, building on your writing, effectively communicating. So much of our work is done through email and being able to ask for things and manage things. Uh, so there's a lot of, I would say there's a lot of important skills and goes back to being well-rounded. But of course, if you're deciding on a particular major and a particular path, uh, there are specific courses as you choose your path that you need to uh, start following through on. Um, so I hope that's sort of answered, answered the question. Uh, what college did I go to? So my undergraduate, I went to Wellesley College in Boston, which is an all women's college um, and excellent college. I think uh, we had people like Hillary Clinton who went there and graduated, Madeleine Albright. Um, we've had a lot of, um, a lot of uh, newspaper uh, reporters and actors come out of that school. Um, and after that, I went to Loyola here in, here in LA, Loyola Marymount and graduated and got my master's in education and my credential out of Loyola. And then when I decided to go back into design and construction, I went to UCLA and got a degree in construction management uh, out of UCLA. And that's been, that's been the colleges that I've gone to. So a lot of schooling. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, speaking, what is your, okay, speaking of emails, what is your expectation when you read a professional email? How important is grammar, spelling, and punctuation? Very important, very important. It, 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 it people, people will, will, will judge you and how much you know if there's spelling mistakes. And the good thing is, there's spell check, right? You can write an email and there's spell check. So you don't have to be the perfect speller. I know a lot of, you know, in our field, a lot of, a lot of people in the industry that I work with never went to college, right? They started in the field, uh, they work their way up. And so they don't come from an academic background necessarily and they're bad spellers. Uh, but what do they do? There's, there's always spell check. There's always, hey, coworker, can you take a look at this? before I send it out, how does this sound to you? So again, collaboration and being mindful uh, of your skill level. And, you know, always working to better that, of course, but thankfully with technology today, you can spell check anytime, spell check that email before you send it. <coughs> and uh, that, that'll, you know, that usually takes care of that. And as, as you grow, I mean, just because you finish schooling doesn't mean you, you don't continue to develop those skills. You, the skills you continue to use, reading and writing and communicating, you're gonna continue to build on those. I, yesterday I took, a, I took a training course. Again, my company always helping us to become better people. They, I'm currently in a program as well to uh, help us with presentation skills. So I'm working on my presentation skills. Obviously it's different now with Zoom. Uh, so, there's things, new things that I have to learn. So you're, you're always constantly learning, but yes, those, it's important to communicate. It's important to check your writing when you communicate. Uh, it, it brings a level of professionalism to what, what you do. All right, anything else? Any, any questions about the internship or is there anyone interested? Oh, sorry.
Was that Olu? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Did I? I I couldn't. It sounded a little bit robotic there. The the transmission. Olu, we can't hear you. Can you um, restate that, or maybe put it in the chat? I think your Wi-Fi is having issues. Yeah, if anybody has any questions or if you get a chance to take a look at the internship opportunity, uh, I'm always available. Um, I'm available regardless of that. If later on you decide this type of career sounds like something you'd be interested in if you've always been interested in construction. Um, one of the things I know sometimes we tend to think of construction as, as just you know low level paying work, um, but there's a huge industry even if you decided, hey, college isn't for me, I, I want to be a builder, I want to be a carpenter, I want to be an electrician, there are careers for you. Um, so if you're someone that's like, hey, I don't, I don't really like this other side of it, um, there's always a career in technical fields as well that are very well paid if you figure out and you decide, uh, you know, how to, how to get into that field and do technical training to help build those skills. So there's a variety of things that that you can do in this industry, um, if that's if that's something you you want to do. All right, it sounds like we're we're wrapping up. She's this is Olu. I just want to think of okay. Thank thank you for having me. Um, I know this is a short presentation, um, but I always appreciate you know the King Drew community and and the great talent that you guys produce. And so that's one of the reasons why I reach out to to your school for this internship opportunity. Um, I know you guys have a high caliber of students and, and so I'm always happy to, to come talk, talk on career day and, and get involved and help, help support you. Yeah, of course. Um, I do want to piggyback on Olu. Thank you for this presentation. I know it does a lot for our students. Um, so we really want to thank you. Thank you very much. And you're getting a few shout out thank yous in the chat. Ms. Howdy. Thank you very much. I actually have, um, I'll get, I do have, normally when I go speak, I try to bring some, some freebies, right? We always have a company branded material. I do have this really nice, I don't know if you can see it. I have this really nice backpack. It's, uh, you can carry your computer or your, your iPad or laptop or whatever you're working on. Um, I'll get that to either Ms. Soto or Ms. Thick Penn. Um, if we can, do you guys save a recording of the chat of the people who ask questions? Are you able to save that? Okay, maybe you can just do a raffle for those people that asked the question and one of them can, can receive the backpack for, for participating. Okay. So I'll, 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 send, that, I'll send that to King Drew. All right, well, thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate your questions and I hope that I've helped uh, inspire you a little bit uh, in your careers and your, your endeavors. Thank you, you. Have. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much for coming. And students, 